Please welcome your host, Dion Taylor. Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. Have you ever had the need to launch a Power Automate flow from a custom button inside a model-driven app? If you have, then this is definitely the video you want to watch. Let me show you how you can configure the system to do exactly that. For this example, I'm going to use a scenario where I want to change the status of an order from within the sales hub. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create two buttons. And the first button is called put on hold. And I want the button to update a new column that I'm going to create. That's going to be in the order table that is called hold button. Now the power effects formula that is fired when the button is clicked will then update that hold button column with the word active hold. And then it will also add a random value so that each time when the button is clicked, a unique value will be entered in that column. Now when the hold button gets populated with data that includes the word active, it's then going to launch a power automate flow that will set the status of the order onto hold. And then you also see my second button here that's called release hold. And also when this button is clicked, it will have a power FX formula that's going to update again, that hold button column, right? Same one that we updated before as well. And it's going to put the value of remove hold in there and then also a random value so that each time the button is clicked, a unique value will be entered in that column. And then when the hold button gets populated, like I said earlier, but this time with data that includes the word remove, it will launch the same power automate flow, but this time it will set the status of the order to a custom status, which is called in progress. And then lastly, I also am going to show a notification when each of those buttons are clicked. And lastly, I only want the button to be visible when an order has been selected from the grid. So let's take a look and see how that works. So here I am in the Adatum Corporation account here in the sales hub. And as you can see, we have two orders that are uh, under the Adatum Corporation account. Now, if you look here, you notice that my buttons are not visible right now. That's because I actually have some power FX in there that only shows those buttons when one of the orders is selected so you can kind of see that over here right here are my buttons put on hold release hold so i'm going to go ahead and click put on hold and you'll notice that we now get a notification on the top of the screen that actually says that that hold is in progress now since this is a power automate flow that is running in the back end i will actually have to refresh my screen to actually now see the change of that status reason. Now, again, if I want to take that off hold, release that hold, I can do the same thing. Again, I'm clicking that release hold button and you'll notice now again, hold in progress. And once I refresh, we can now see that the status reason has been set to in progress, which is actually a custom status reason uh, that I added to the order table. All right, so now that you know how this works, let's now take a look at how I configured the application to be able to do this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that new column to the order table. So I'm gonna look, I'm gonna click on all here because sometimes it filters and I'm gonna look for the order table. So here it is, I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. I'm gonna click on columns and I'm gonna create that new column. And I'm going to call that hold button. It's going to be a single line of text. And as you can see here, the format is text. I'm really not going to do anything. You can see here, it says CRFCF instead of RSM underscore hold button, right? That depends on whether or not you create this in the solution that also has a publisher and then has that beginning of that schema name in there. 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click save on here. And now that it's done, all I have to do is I'm going to publish this table. All right, so my publish has succeeded. So we now added that column here to the order table. So the next thing that we're going to do here is add the buttons. So in order to do this, I actually have to select the app for which I want to add the buttons, right? So you can see here all of my apps. I'm going to actually add this to the sales hub. So I'm going to click here on this edit icon in the sales hub and you'll see that that will actually load that configuration screen. So we're looking again, right, to add these buttons to the order table. So I'm going to look for the orders view and I can scroll up. Here you go. It's already kind of dark gray. It's showing me where this is. So from here, I'm going to click here on these ellipse here and then I can say edit command bar. I can also edit it in another tab if I wanted to, but I'm just going to click edit. And now I have to select for which bar I want to edit. Do I want to edit the main grid, right? So if you go to a list of all orders, right, that's the main grid. Do I want to edit the main form, a subgrid view? Well, actually all subgrid views or the associated view. So I'm going to say subgrid view and then I'm going to create click on my edit button. So that loads this window, which is going to allow you to now update any of these new buttons. You can see here that I actually have the ability to, uh, to edit those or, and this is what we're going to do. We're going to create a couple of new buttons here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on new and I'm going to do a command button and I'm going to call this I'm going to call this button put on hold. So that's what I'm going to enter here. And then you can also select an icon for that as well. So I'm going to say use icon and what I'm actually going to use here for this icon, you can kind of see that you can see kind of all the icons that are available here, right? But you can also kind of search for an icon as well by just entering the name in here. So I'm going to look for Mark as lost. I really like this icon over here. And as you can see, now we have a nice looking icon next to the put on hold button as well. So what I want to do is I want to run a formula, right? So all I have to do here is click on the open formula bar to actually start editing what I want to happen, right? When people actually click this button. So what I want to do here is I'm going to enter in here. I want to patch. Oops, patch. This is what I, what I want to do. I want to patch the orders table. So I'm going to type in orders, right? And then I want to actually patch the item that has been selected. You saw earlier, I selected an order. So I'm going to say self and then selected and then item, right? So we want to patch the selected order here. And then what we want to update is the hold button that we just created, right? So we're going to see hold button. And what we want to put in there is the word active hold. And then I also want to add a random number to that as well. So that each time when we're clicking that button, it's going to be a unique, uh, data in there, right? So I'm going to say rand and then I'm going to enter these brackets here. I'm going to close this and I'm going to close the entire patch function. Then I also want to put a notification in there. So let's add that as well. I'm going to say notify and here is our notification. And then what I want it to show is hold in progress. That's the text that you saw earlier after I clicked that button. And then I also want to set the notification type because this is actually saying that this was successful. And then I want to put it in there. I want to show it for four seconds. 
And then again, I'm going to close that. So this is what your power FX formula is going to look like, right? So when again, that button is, is pushed, it's going to enter the active hold, a random number. And then it also shows that notification, which you saw earlier when I was demonstrating this functionality. Now, the other thing that we want to do here is we actually only want the button to show up when we're selecting an order, right? From that subgrid. So what I'm going to do here, visibility, I'm going to set this to show on condition from formula. And then I'm going to go ahead and enter in here, count rows. And then again, we're going to do the self dot selected dot. We're going to count all the items that have been selected and we want that to be equal to one. So that's what we want to do in here. So that's how we're entering or adding that put on hold button here to uh, the orders table. Now you saw also in the demo that I was able to release that hold. So let's go ahead and add another button. So I'm going to again say, this is going to be a command. We're going to say release, you can say release, release, hold, whatever we want to do here. So let's just put the release hold in here. Again, we can pick an icon. So let's just put this accept icon over here. And then again, we can go ahead and put the patch in here, except for showing active hold. I want to put something in here that says remove hold. And then everything else is going to be the same. Again, for visibility, I want to show this on the condition, right? So I can say the same thing. I can say count rows. There we go. And now I can go ahead and save and publish my buttons here. All right. Now, I did notice like if, if you, it, it could be that when you're putting this, let me just open this formula, but when you're putting this formula together, right? Sometimes maybe you're adding this, this hold button, uh, this column to the table after the fact, right? And then it doesn't show up, right? You, you just, you're typing this in, but it's not showing up in right in that formula it says that button doesn't exist if that happens to you what you want to do is you want to actually open the component library so i'm going to go ahead and do that here for a second and then what you want to do is you want to refresh the data so let's give it a second here while this loads so here you can kind of see some buttons that i have here right that's what it's showing here so what you want to do is you want to click here on data and then you want to go to that table for which that field, that column is not showing up. And then you want to click here, that refresh button. So when you do that, you'll actually notice that you will then find that column that you created. All right. So let's just go ahead and go back here. So the next thing that we're going to do now is we're going to create our power automate flow, right? So that's really that logic that updates the order, right? So let's go ahead and let's go to uh, power automate flow. So here we are at make.powerautomate.com and this is where we're going to create our power automate flow. Now, since this power automate flow will be triggered by the population of my newly created hold button, this is why we're actually going to generate an automated cloud flow. I'm actually going to skip this particular step because I like to use uh, what we see over here, this, this full screen to build my power automate flow. Now, the first thing you want to do is actually give it a name. So I'm going to say hold button for order, and then we're going to add a trigger. Now, this is going to be 
Dataverse. And what I want to do is I want to add a trigger when a row is added, modified, or deleted. And obviously I only want to trigger it when it is modified. Now the table for this, I'm going to enter that is orders and here we go. And then my scope is going to be organization because I want this to trigger for anybody in here. Then I want some additional parameters. I want to have, uh, right. One column where this triggers off of, and that is my CRF six F underscore hold button. That's that newly created hold button, right? That you saw, I, uh, I added to the system earlier. And then I want to put an expression in there as well. If that button contains active or it contains remove hold, I want to go ahead and, and fire this flow. Now, the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a condition in here and I'm going to say, let's just get rid of this side pane here. I'm going to put in here the, the condition of what is in that hold button again. So I'm going to go ahead and find the hold button. If the value in the hold button actually contains the word active, that's for that active hold, right? That is my condition. So, oops, let's just go ahead and take a look at that. We have a true path and then we have a false path as well. If that is true, then I want to update the order. So again, Microsoft Dataverse, and I want to go ahead and update that order, right? Update the row, which is again, the order table. And of course we need the unique ID of that order. So again, we're going to click on this little lightning icon and I'm going to type in order because we're going to get the unique ID from the trigger, right? When a row is added, modified or deleted. And this is that unique identifier. Then the only thing I have to do here is set my status reason, right? If it is on an active hold, I want to set this to my custom status. I just added this status to the status status reason column. I want to set it to on hold. There you go. And then the next one, if this is actually going to the false step, I want to add an action again. I'm going to go to Microsoft Dataverse. I'm going to update a row again, doing the same thing, updating the same table. We're going to update orders. And we're again going to get that unique order ID by searching for that unique identifier of that order. And then we're going to set this to my in progress active. This is also a new status that I added to the order status reason. And that is it. Just make sure that you actually save your flow as well. You'll notice that sometimes it says, or oh, your flow might have a circular loop because you're kicking this off when it's actually, uh, when it's actually added, modified or deleted in this particular case, modified, but I am filtering this, right? So only if that CRF six F hold button uh, is updated. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Thanks for watching. Until next time.